Hello again, my name is Brandy Horn. I'm an instruction reference librarian at the Greg Granville Library. Welcome back. Um, in the previous video, we talked about how to find ebooks in the library's catalog. In this video, we're going to look at how to search library databases to find sources. Uh, you'll see that I've got two kind of windows here up side by side. I've got the library homepage, but then to the left of it, um, you'll see that I have the worksheet that you should have gotten from your professor along with these links to these videos. Um, and what I have done on the worksheet is just kind of filled in with my examples. Uh, and you'll notice at the top under number one, so where I identify, where I identify um, my topic, I write down Flannery O'Connor, and I'm looking at religion in the short story, Good Man is Hard to Find. And then under number two, um, what I've got here is a combination of the next three steps of the research process. So the second step of the research process is to explore your topic and that can be done through brainstorming or reading. Um, the third step of the research process is to come up with your research question. When you're dealing with literary criticism, it's not so much of a question as just an area of focus that you want to explore. And then um, the next step of the research process is to generate potential search terms. So when you're dealing with literary criticism, we can combine all those into one step. And I've done this here with number two with this table. Um, and ideally you would start with like a blank table and just kind of begin brainstorming what it is you're interested in with the work and how you would articulate those concepts. Uh, but in the worksheet that I've given you, um, I have these different headings filled out for you. So author, author title, author title element, right? Um, and then it's up to you to kind of go in and fill in the details yourself, uh, just so that you can see that there are different combinations of concepts that you can use to potentially find information on your topic. Um, literary criticism is pretty great in the fact that it starts you off with a couple search terms automatically, um, just by virtue of the fact that you're looking at literature. So um, author and title are things that you can always start off with. I always recommend to people that you start off broadly and then get narrower as you go. Um, so each line of this table represents a search. And so the first search you would just do author's name and see what happens. And if you need to limit it further, you might do author and title. And then if you need to lim limit it further, you might do author, title, and element. Okay. And then um, you could also just do author and element uh, because oftentimes uh, authors talk about the same things over and over again in all of their works or, or a lot of their work. And so you can find other articles um, that talk about religion in Flannery O'Connor's writing. And then it's up to you to make the connections with the specific work that you're looking at, right? So that would be a way to search. So that worksheet just kind of talks you or, you know, walks you through different potential search combinations um, and then you can fill in the details with what, with what you're looking at with your work. So we're going to use this as a guide um, uh, as we uh, search the databases. So looking at the library's homepage on the right hand side, um, we looked at books and media, that's how you look for ebooks in the catalog or look for books in the catalog. Uh, the databases tab is an alphabetical listing of all 300 plus databases that we have access to. They're mostly subject specific, so unless you know exactly which ones would be useful to you in literary criticism, I wouldn't use the databases tab. Instead, I would use the research guides tab, which what we have here is an alphabetical listing of guides by subject. And we have a literary criticism guide, and each subject guide would contain a list of resources that you could use for research in this area. So we're going to click on the literary criticism guide. And once we're in the guide, we are going to click the find articles tab. Now, ordinarily, the first thing that I would show you here is the MLA International Bibliography Database, um, because that would be where I would recommend that you'd start. Unfortunately, this database has been acting weird today um, and has not worked consistently. I still want to show it to you. Um, because it's still usable, but it's not usable in the way that I want you to learn it. So instead, to get us started, we're going to use Academic Search Premier because MLA International Bibliography, also comes from ESCO, has the same interface, right? Um, but it's more literary criticism focused, 
whereas Academic Search Premier is a general database and it covers all, all subject areas. Um, so we will find some literary criticism in Academic Search Premier, we just won't find as much. But for the purposes of showing you functionality, we're going to look at this first. Um, so again, as I said, each line is a search. I recommend you starting off broadly. So I'm just going to search Flannery O'Connor first, just to see what happens. <clears throat> okay. So I get 778 results, which is a lot. I'm not going to read 778 results. At this point, you can limit to peer-reviewed. You're not required to limit it to peer-reviewed, um, but your professor has asked that you use it as much as possible. I'm not going to click on it right now, but just know that at this point you can go ahead and limit it um, and take out everything that's not peer-reviewed, right? So that would take out things like newspapers and magazines and whatnot. Um, but right now I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm interested in Flannery O'Connor. I'm specifically interested in Good Man is Hard to Find. So you know, you can pay attention to your autocomplete options. And then I'm going to search. So this is my second search now, right? We have Flannery O'Connor, the author in the first search box and the title in the second search box. So I have now 46 things on a good man is hard to find. Honestly, 46 is not many. I would go through 46 and see what was there. Um, as you go through, you'll find that there are items that are in full text in this database and you'll find that there are items that are not full text in this database. If something is not full text in this database, you can click the full text finder button and it will tell you whether or not we have access to the full text elsewhere. And then you can click whichever option to be able to access the full text. Most of the time it'll take you directly to it. Okay. Um, but if it's not full text anywhere else, there will be no options there. Okay. So when you're searching in these databases, I do not recommend, because it does say limit to full text here, I do not recommend limiting to full text. Um, because you could be over limiting yourself. If it's available elsewhere, that full text finder button will show you, right? So unless you're just getting tons of results, I do not recommend limiting to full text. Um, but as you scroll through, if anything looks like it could potentially be useful to you, um, you can click on the title, right? and then look at the abstract. The abstract is going to be a summary or overview of the work. Um, if you find, if you decide that this could potentially be useful to you on the right hand side under tools, you can email the item to yourself. Okay. The PDF will be attached to the email. Um, and then you can create a folder or something in your Outlook and everything you email yourself from a database. Move it to that folder so that you have all of your research in a central location that you can access from anywhere. <laughs> um, just a couple more things about the item record before I click back out of it. Um, if you are interested in, um, if you're interested in a particular, this article as a source, um, you can under tools, you have the site button. and you scroll down. Okay. Um, people get excited about the site button and they want to, you know, they pull this into their papers for their citations. Um, these buttons, these site button site tools are almost always incorrect in some way. Um, and specifically in EBSCO databases, which is infuriating. Um, one of the things they do is they say that the database name is EBSCOhost. The database name is never EBSCOhost. In this case, we are in Academic Search Premier. Um, and that would be our database name. It would not be EBSCOhost. Uh, MLA International Bibliography is also an EBSCO database. So if you said EBSCOhost, we wouldn't know which one you were talking about. We get 30 or 40 databases from EBSCO. So the site button is very much a buyer beware sort of situation. You have to go through and make sure that your citation is correct before you turn it in. Okay. So just keep that in mind. So 
We have Flannery O'Connor. We have Good Man is Hard to Find. I'm specifically interested in religion. So I add that as a search term. That's my third search on my worksheet. And now I'm down to eight results. Okay, so I can go through and see what kinds of things I have specific to religion. Now notice this says academic journal, this says academic journal, this says periodical, right? So this is going to be a magazine, okay? Um, again, your assignment does not prevent you from using them. It will be up to you when you read it to decide whether or not um, it is a source that is actually useful to you, okay? Now, that's just a quick and dirty, this is how we combine search terms. Now remember, I said you don't have to limit yourself to the work title. You can do Flannery O'Connor and just religion and see what's written there. And now we have 96 items. Okay, so we can go through and see what kinds of things that we have. Right, maybe we specifically want to look at um, uh, redemption. Okay, so we can look at the concept of redemption. Maybe we want to look at faith. Okay, so what you can do with the table on the left is come up with different search term combinations and see what kinds of articles you get. Okay, because you're gonna you're writing a paper, you're not just gonna talk about one thing. You're not gonna do just one search. You're gonna do multiple searches to try to find articles to attack or to address the different aspects of your argument, okay? So you should be fully prepared to do multiple searches and to go through multiple results lists to see which articles are most useful to you. Now, this was Academic Search Premier. I'm gonna close this. We're gonna look at MLA International Bibliography. Okay. All right, so Flannery O'Connor, I'm just gonna search her name. Okay, so notice we get, per, in Agony Search Premier, we had like seven or 800. Here we have almost 2,000, okay? Um, let's see what happens, because this did not work before. Let's say I was interested in the concept of irony in Flannery O'Connor. Okay. So instead of editing this video so that this doesn't, this doesn't appear, I'm just going to leave this and let you see what happens. Um, for some reason, this database is throwing up an error saying there's no results, and that's not the case. Um, it has been functioning on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that word out. I'm just going to search Flannery O'Connor. What we're going to do instead of typing in more words here, on the left-hand side, we're going to scroll down an under source type, no, not under source types, under subject, excuse me, you're going to click subject and you're going to click show more. Now you will have some titles of things that she's written, like the violent bear away, right? You've got some, uh, you've got for, like genre and whatever, but you've also have themes like violence, right? Catholicism, which relates to religion, Christianity, divine grace. So if I was interested in religion, I could search all of these as well. Um, but I scroll through and I see, again, we have redemption and whatnot. Um, but I have irony right here. There are 20 items next to irony. Maybe I'm also interested in humor, right? You could do one thing, you can do multiple things. Um, you know, I scroll through, see if there's anything else that relates to that specific type of thing that I'm interested in. Maybe I also do satire. Okay, and then I click update. So now I've gone from almost 2,000 results to 49, which is pretty manageable. And at this point, you're going to have things like this, which are going to be um, book chapters, which are not, you're not going to be able to access the full text here. Um, to do away with that, on the left, you can limit to academic journals, and that removes those from your results list. Okay, and then you can go through, and the same way as Academic Search Premier, if something looks like it could potentially be useful to you, you can click on it. And if there's an abstract, read it. 
on the right hand side under tools email it to yourself now I'm hitting the 15 minute mark here um, so I'm gonna stop this video and then I'm gonna show you JSTOR